Hey guys, what's going on? Got this question here this morning. Wanted to get that answered for you. So uh, just to reiterate, I was wondering how the process from train conductor to engineer works, like the phases you go through and the training. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, uh, I don't know if most of you guys know this, but when you apply to become a conductor with a class one railroad, you're actually applying to become an engineer. Uh, that's why when you go through the application process, you'll see the guaranteed minimums for the conductor at the top, and then you'll see the guaranteed minimums for the engineer at the bottom. And there's also the stipulation in there that says uh, at some point you will be asked to go to engine school. It's going to be based on the needs at the terminal that you're at and also the confidence of the train master that you're working with in your capabilities to perform the job uh, safely. So that's kind of kind of that issue. As far as time frames go, um, the training for conductor is is the same as the training for engineer uh, because it's it's just part of the process. Uh, so you'll start out and initially when I went through, it was two weeks in McDonough, Georgia, uh, two weeks of OJT, and then back on your home terminal, and then one week at a regional training center to finish hazmat and a bunch of other stuff, and then you were back on your home terminal until you marked up. Um, right now, the way that it's running is they're doing three weeks in McDonough, Georgia, and you're doing everything down there. So you're doing your three weeks, uh, you're all the way through your hazmat, everything done down there, and then you go OJT until you mark up as a conductor. So they've eliminated that week five, at least right now. It changes frequently and often, so uh, it, it may be different by the time you guys view this video. <laughs> so, uh, But as far as the, the time frames go, uh, it really, again, depends on the business needs of that terminal. So uh, they want to make sure that you are a competent and confident conductor you have uh, you know all of the knowledge that you need as far as everything goes and the more you work with the engineers uh, in the yard the more information you'll gather and gain from them and, and their input to your managers and, and kind of how they feel about you um, as an employee and as a co-worker really helps your chances in, the, in that factor uh, because realistically your managers are going to go up to those engineers and say hey how'd the shift go how's he working out I know how's Curtis doing here you know is there anywhere he can improve that kind of thing they're going to take that information into consideration so learn as much as you can from the engineers that you're currently working with um, to make that transition as easy as possible outside of that it again it's it's based on business needs so i've seen people get sent to engine school within two and a half to three years and then i've seen people you know seven years in and they still haven't been sent it, it just depends on the business needs of that particular terminal i've seen people quit and go to different terminals uh, to actually get invited to go to engine school, uh, to be able to go that direction. So that's pretty much it. It's just kind of a waiting game as far as that's concerned. The pay is significantly better for engineers um, in the long run, but everyone starts as a conductor.